Jerry Lou and ask Nadia if what happened in the matter of seconds to find the rest of their lives. Olympic Indoor Hall, it's the women's all-around final. The first time any of us saw Carly Patterson in a gym and on an apparatus, we thought of this night when that All-American Ivory Snowface would come here and show the world that she is the best gymnast that there is. Courtney Coupets about a year ago ripped apart her Achilles tendon during that long, lonely rehab. All she heard about was Carly, 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 and then she got healthy enough to win a co-national championship with Carly Patterson. Her problem is her leg is not totally healthy. And then there is Svetlana Horkina. We'll be detailing her story, but basically she's one of the best that there has ever been. The icon of Russian gymnastics right now needing an Olympic all-around medal, a gold medal to be specific, to complete her career. Octavian Bellu and the Romanians basking in their team gold medal, getting a phone call from the president of the country, having fan support here that apparently has sold out Romanian flags in Athens. One of their gymnasts, Oana Bon, has had to pull out because of a bad ankle. That leaves them with Daniela Solfroni, and she's got plenty to bring. Well, a very good start for Daniela. Four apparatus, all scores count. You know what's amazing to me is Daniela was only the alternate for the Romanian team at last year's World Championships, but she did so well at this year's Europeans, second in the all-around. Octavian Bellu, her coach, wanted her on this team. And you know, with the dramatics of last night and Paul Ham battling back, it's important to note that the men have six events. You see the score there, 9-4-1-2 for Daniela. The men have six events. The women only have four. If you've got a disaster like Paul Ham, anywhere in your repertoire tonight, it's over. Alina Kozic of Ukraine is the European champion. And the Ukrainians work beautiful uneven bars. They have tremendous line. Very similar skills from what we've seen from the Chinese athletes like that element right there. Into a release move, you combine the more difficult skills together and you get even more bonus points. So, uh, it's been a little bit frustrating though watching the Ukrainians. They are so good, but in the team competitions they have really not perform to their level. They've underperformed. Finishing out of the medals here in Athens in fifth place. Of course, this is not about team depth. This is about you. Individual performance on four apparatus. And Al, you mentioned her placement at the European Championship. She was absolutely thrilled with winning. That's a big deal to European athletes, especially heading into these Olympic Games. And she really considers herself a contender for this title. Finishes off a great set. Very subtle step on the dismount, but of course, as we know, judges are looking for those steps. 9-5-1-2. We're getting a sense now of who the competitors are going to be, the challengers for gold, silver, and bronze. Carly Patterson trying to be much more consistent than she's been so far in these Olympics. Tonight, gold, silver, and bronze in the all-around. She's coming up. Carly Patterson's attempt to travel where Mary Lou Retton once did begins here on the vault. And Al, after the World Championships last year, Carly placed second. She knew that vault was one of the areas she needed to improve on. She comes to Athens with a bigger vault. The Yurchenko double twist, we're seeing it from a lot of athletes. The start value is 9-8. That's a tenth higher from last year's World Championships. Well, it was a great ball. Didn't she hop back and bounce? Well, her feet land outside of the white line, which will be a, an additional deduction. But it had tremendous power, beautiful form. But she's going to get hit a little bit on this. You have to go high, travel far, and you got to go straight. Very complicated. And you see those feet outside of that white line. That's a deduction. Not the way Carly Patterson wanted to start this. But getting set, 
on the uneven bars from China is Ken Chen Wang. And the story of the Chinese women is a lot like the Chinese men. Their team events turned out to be a disaster. There could be some redemption here for them. Now Carly gets hit hard. 9.375. Can she come back from that, you think? Yeah, it, that's possible. This is not her best event. She's got some really big possibilities coming up, especially on balance team. She's phenomenal. She scored 9-7 plus in the qualifying round, so it can happen. I only say that because in comparison to what we watched last night, she doesn't have six events. She's only got the four. Exactly. We talk so much about the Chinese bar routines. This is an event where they can score huge in the 9-7 range because of the beauty that they do right there. The release skills, the handstand positions. One of the areas that this Chinese team, these gymnasts excel, they have tremendous shoulder flexibility. They're able to lift their arms completely over their heads, makes everything they do look a little freer, a little lighter, it's beautiful. Well, very good start for her. Obviously, the stick on the landing will help. She knows, though, that the uneven bars are where she can really get a, a great jump on everybody else. And as Tim mentioned, the routine had some really spectacular moments, and this was a beauty right here. Sticking that dismount feels great. Wang Qingqiang gets a 9-5-3-7. Different apparatus, but still you get a sense that Carly Patterson already, after just one rotation, has some coming back to do. Now, the Chinese teammate, Zhang Nan, was on the vault moments ago, and she was with Carly Patterson and Svetlana Horkina on the podium at the World Championships last year. So there's no reason to think she won't be involved here. Absolutely not. She is the leader of the Chinese team. They consider her to be the one with the most international experience and the one to make a mark here in the individual all-around competition. She got a bronze at the World Championships in the all-around, but she says it shocked her. Didn't think she was that good. A nice vault, but not a difficult enough vault. Only starts from a maximum of 9.7. And after the judge should start with that 9.7, then they nitpick and take deductions for lack of height, amplitude, body position, form in the air, and of course, the all-important landing. As we move from one apparatus to another, Jiang Nan gets a 9-3-2-5. This is the lead seated group. If someone won a medal outside of this group, it would be a surprise. And it'll be a way for us to keep track of who's what and what's where between, say, Zhang Nan, Carly Patterson, and Svetlana Horkina, who's coming up. And I like it. This is actually the first time they've seated these athletes like this at an Olympic Games. It makes it much more competitive. Oh, yes. This is going to be an interesting race. Svetlana Horkina, the diva of Russian gymnastics. She says this gold medal is the gaping hole in her career. She's next on vault. Svetlana Horkina has a stare that would melt Ivan the Terrible. She had a look like that at the Sydney Olympic Games when something went wrong, even though she says she wants to forget it. What's wrong here? Svetlana Horkina seemed a bit on edge prior to her first vault in Sydney. Yeah. She had reason. Something went terribly wrong in warm-ups. If she lands like that, she will not be Olympic all-around champion. What if you prepared for something your entire life and then it doesn't go according to plan? That, that's it. That's shocking. Game over, no gold medal for Svetlana Horkina. What do you say when you find out your blueprint was right and someone else's did the undoing? This is incredible. There are exact requirements for the height of each apparatus. They They're motioning to raise it. Unbelievable. Now, this event has a problem of Olympic-sized proportion. I'm telling you, Al, if I was a coach out on the floor, I would be demanding that my athlete be given another shot if they had a mistake. Too late. Emotionally, the damage was done, and so were Svetlana's chances. Can you forgive? Can you ever forget? No, 
I don't remember what happens in Sydney. It is only on the tape from television. It's not in my memory. When I remind her about Sydney, I tell her, Svetlana, let's look at the videotape. And she says, don't remind me. It was the most terrible moment in my life. It was a black spot in my soul. She doesn't want to remember. During qualifying here in Athens, however, Svetlana's memory may have been viciously jogged. Tonight, will she be able to forget the past, or will that videotape roll in her mind? We're about to find out how bad does she want this gold medal she's never had in her career. Later, she'll tell you, and you won't believe the words she uses. Don't blink, or you may miss a look you'll never forget. And Svetlana will actually perform the same vault that she did four years ago in Sydney. And with the top contenders here, she has the highest start value. It's out of a 9.9. Four years later, what a difference. Hey, Four years later and uh, a notch <laughs> higher on the vaulting table. Yeah, that's the best landing she could have asked for. Let's remember that Svetlana, that fateful night in Sydney, was given the opportunity, like all the other gymnasts who had gone, to re-vault. But by then, she had fallen on uneven bars. The night was a loss, and she was in no mood to do it again. Who knows? It may have looked like this, and the night may have turned out totally different. Yeah, because in training there, we saw her do a vault many times that looked exactly like this. But, you know, Svetlana has hinted a little bit that this Olympic all-around medal is what she has been searching for, and if she had won it there, she might not be here now. Watching her persona, there is the rest of the team, the coaches, and then there's her. <laughs> she's taller than everybody else, she's had more experience than everyone else, and she seems to love being the, the patron saint. Her and the 64-year-old coach, Leonid Arkayev, we've spoken about how they're trying to keep the spirit and the strength of Russian gymnasts alive. When you see those judges picking up the telephone and having a little conversation, it's bad news. The scores are usually going to go down. And Svetlana looks up at the score and with that face almost says, you guys just don't understand me. 9462. You know, I'm a little surprised they picked up the phone in the first place. I think it's just a tad bit low. A part of the spirit that Svetlana passes on is to a gymnast like Anna Pavlova at the age of only 16. The Russians were in tears of joy when they were able to rescue a bronze medal out of the team competition. This was a team that just kept getting better and better as the week wore on in the practices and the competition. Anna Pavlova, of course, a big reason why they won that bronze medal. That and China just melted. She's actually a very good gymnast. She was the 2002 European Junior Champion. Didn't quite come through for the Russian team last year at the World Championships. She's coming through right now. That's a just really now. nice look on the uneven bars. It's like she's a little kid on a playground. Looks like fun, doesn't it? Beautiful. know that the Russian head coach Leonid Arkayev had very low expectations for Anna. She, in the major competitions as of late, has not really performed to her ability, but so far she's been doing a great job, and that is a good score. Not a great score, but a good score for Pavlova. Still to come, American Courtney Kupets. She's got an injured leg. We'll see how that factors into tonight. The games of the 28th Olympiad on NBC. $2.99 a month. NBC special. Co After shredding her Achilles tendon last year, the last thing in the world that Courtney Kupets would have wanted, having made it all the way back to the Olympic Games, was to have another leg injury to deal with. But that sometimes is what happens. So she's got some soreness in her right leg as she gets set to begin. Her competition in the women's all-around. Her teammate Carly Patterson has gone on vault and scored a 
Well, it was a beautiful vault. Just maybe didn't get her chest upright enough as she was coming into the landing and has to take that step. And considering the slight injury, you know, she handled that very well. I didn't notice a limp. And I guess gymnasts have to deal with pain all the time. Here's a high-speed, super slow-mo look at it. This should be cool. Very intricate vault. You see that half turn on. She smashes that horse to get up in the air, does a front flip with her legs straight. It's called a pike position with a half turn. She had just had that chest up a little bit on that landing. And Wouldn't have needed to take that step. And the start value is a 9-7 on this vault. Which again means that's the maximum she can get. Is she out of bounds there? I think so. So that's another deduction. And it's way down. A 9.275 for Courtney Coupets. So she'll start her prep work for the next apparatus for this lead group. That would be the uneven bars. Let's check in on Emily Le Penet of Al, France. Al, this is an awesome <laughs> routine. She's got, I think, probably the most difficult elements in the entire Olympic Games on uneven bars. And she does the first one in combination right here. Takes your breath away. Watch this. This release. Wow. Super, super difficult. It's called a DEP, named after a fellow country person. But it was a guy who did it on high bar first. Those girls are always stealing hey. our thunder. And an awesome <laughs> double twisting, double somersault dismount. And she rocks the house on the landing. The French team, of course, have high hopes for her. She scored a 9.662 in the first day of competition. The importance there is she made it into the event finals. We mentioned that if someone from outside of the group that includes Carly Patterson and Courtney Coupets was able to get involved in the medal picture, it would be a surprise. And Emily has just done that with a big score on uneven bars. And here's her teammate, Marine Debov. And she qualified into the all-around finals in 10th position. France, of course, finished sixth in the team competition. And they're enjoying a great start order for them in this competition. By starting on this event, you're going to see them in a higher place in the all-around after this apparatus is over. This is one of their strengths. I, I don't know if they'll be able to maintain their placings. But after round one, they'll be way up there and a stuck landing. Guys, where is this French gymnastics coming from? It's coming from a 10th place finish out last year at the World Championships. They were absolutely thrilled with that heading into Athens and then that final team finish in sixth. And that finish at the World Championships got them into these Olympic Games, and they're making the most out of this chance. And Marine gets a 9 5 1 2. She'll be right up there with the leaders. Top three. And that will do it for the first rotation. Here's what we know a French surprise, first and third. But you can't compare apparatus, so you have to wait until. Everybody's done. Svetlana Horkina in fifth. Carly Patterson in eighth. She's got some coming back to do. Courtney Kupetz as well, 12th. But everybody in this group, including Svetlana Horkina, moves to the uneven bars. And that is an absolute strength for this woman who was a multiple world champion and a two-time gold medalist there. And joining her, Carly Patterson. She can star there too. On the Carly front, don't be alarmed. Vaulting is the lowest scoring event. She goes to uneven bars where she excels. Still to come, the charge for the most coveted crown in gymnastics continues with much more from the women's all around. And back at the pool, Michael Phelps soars for competition. The all around final once again, Al Troutwig, Elfie Schlegel and Tim Daggett. One rotation down, three to go in the women's all-around final here at the Indoor Hall. Carly Patterson trying to become only the second American woman in Olympic history to win the all-around gold medal. She's got to come back from eighth place. Courtney Coupette's down in 12th. A 
couple of French women are surprising everyone with their performances so far on the uneven bars. And that's where Carly and Svetlana Horkina and Courtney will be. But this other group, including Wang Qing Chan, is on the balance beam. And she had a very good start on bars with a 9-5-3-7. We've always talked about the Chinese excelling on balance beam. But interestingly, this young lady is very powerful on vaulting and floor exercise. She truly is an all-around gymnast. So this is the perfect kind of night for her. Going to see a lot of jumps like that from the best athletes in the world, along with acrobatic combinations. Elfie, do the gymnasts love the balance beam or is it love-hate? I, I think it's a love-hate relationship. Balance beam's the trickiest by far. A Requires lot of, a lot of concentration. And a lot of the athletes really enjoy doing it in training. It's a lot of fun and it's very challenging, but not too many people love doing balance beam at the Olympic Games, Al. Just her dismount. This has been an excellent routine. Oh, God. That is, that's bad news. She was in second place after the first rotation, but with only four events for the women and a major error like that, that's really going to take her out of the medal picture completely. You know, beautiful work like this is what we always expect from the Chinese athletes, but we're never quite sure what they're going to do in these situations and all around competitions. We've seen them fall. We saw that in the team final. Just That's doesn't open her body at all on that dismount and you score below a nine in the all around finals and you're not even gonna be on the first page. Here's Daniela Safroni in the leaders group with Carly Patterson and Courtney Kupets and Svetlana Horkina. One of the stories that continues to follow Romanian gymnastics is what happened to Andrea Radican back in Sydney. She had taken something like a Sudafed, and although she did not test positive after the team final, she did after the all-around final, and in the end, they had to take her gold medal away. It was a dark moment for her. She's smiling now and covering this Olympics for Romanian television. She told us earlier tonight that when the games are done, she is going to file paperwork to get her gold medal back because, and this is really where it sounds unfair, the substance that she tested positive for in 2000 is no longer an illegal substance. And in this era, when all they're doing is adding extra substances, not taking them away, that really does sound like something they should fix. Give it back. Give it back. And the Romanian women came to these Olympic Games and won the team gold medal again. And they did it in remarkable fashion. They were so consistent. By far the most consistent team in the women's competition. Well, they just didn't make any mistakes whatsoever. Daniela actually was one of the best bar workers for the Romanian team with really cool skills like that to the low bar. She was second in the all-around at the European Championships and Octavian Bellu, the head coach, wanted her on the Romanian team. Boy, she's tough. Yeah, they just don't give anything away. You know, all the landings are, are stuck or almost stuck. And they just hit routine after routine after routine and they let somebody else fall. Only one Romanian woman in this, Oana Bon, who was supposed to be here and qualified, had a bad ankle, so the Romanians have only one gymnast in this all around. And back to Anna Pavlova, who is not in the leader's group. Moments ago on the balance beam, we saw that it knocked Wang Qin Chen right out of it. We could potentially see a really big score from Anna. What I love about this routine is she takes a lot of risk. You see a lot of twisting and turning elements. And a tremendous amount of variety in her gymnastics. Watch this all the way across the beam. And then... Oh, That's really, really cool. hard. Very, very great. Carly Patterson, Courtney Coupet, Svetlana Horkina still to come on the uneven bars. 
sometimes the hardest things for the gymnasts in these combination passes are connecting them one to the next. She handles that beautifully. Anna got her start in gymnastics the way many gymnasts in the U.S. do. They're, her mom is actually a coach and used to bring her to the gym along with her. Said, this looks like fun. I'll give it a try. And her mom is actually the coach here for the Russian team. Really pretty exercise, just the dismount. So it's a triple twist. She's still going to be in it? Oh, no doubt about it. That was a great routine. As we said at the top, the thing that's really neat about it is, and there's her mom right there. What's neat about this exercise is she does a lot of variety. It's not just the same stock stuff. She does some really unique and innovative things and does them, does them all quite well. We've got some bookkeeping to do. Stop runnies, uneven bar score, nine, six, three, seven. And that is not a strong apparatus for the Romanians, but that is a very strong score. You know, on the team final, they tried to just survive there. Looks as though she's trying to do more than that. From a Russian standpoint, Anna Pavlova is giving Russian gymnastics something to think about in the future in this final Olympic performance for Svetlana Horkina. Carly Patterson has made her way to the uneven bars, which is where she'll be next. Highlight of the game. Four routines, no do-overs. For Carly Patterson, rotation two means being on the uneven bars. She wants to be like she was night one and definitely not like she was night two. This was the team final. What went wrong? Well, she got a little bit tentative, Al, and actually changed her routine a little bit, got nervous. It comes up right here. Watch. She's not supposed to go over the bar right here, and she does, passes through the handstand, and now she's kind of making things up as she goes. But one of the problems happened right here on the low bar. Dead hang. It made it almost impossible for her. And then she just cracks her foot on the bar. And the American women went on to win the silver medal on a night when the expectation was gold. And I think it's safe to say that the expectation this night is a lot like that night for Carly Patterson. So she's got to make this happen. There have only been 11 all-around gold medalists in the history of the Olympic Games. This event didn't start till 1952. So in a sense, what lies ahead is gymnastic immortality. And it can happen for her. She has all of the skills that are needed. She just needs to get the job done. Three more routines. Carly is the reigning silver medalist at the World Championships in the all-around. Finishing second to Svetlana Horkina. She doesn't want a repeat performance of that or a repeat performance of what she did night two on bars. And she's back to the original routine, handling it very well. Here's the other area where she had some difficulty in the last competition. That was great. That's the stuck landing. The kind of landing she needs as a punctuation mark on a night like this. When you see it go so right, is there any other explanation other than maybe she needed to get used to the type of pressure that comes with an Olympics? Well, doesn't matter now. Looks like she's used to it. That's a big routine, Al. Gonna help. She's watching the replay up in the arena. We will, too. Great amplitude on that release skill right through to the low bar. Carly's told us numerous times she's Beautiful. dreamed of being Olympic all-around champion. Sure, everybody does. Difference is she could do it. 9575, the only American woman to do it was Mary Lou Retton. And to some people, this is even a bigger stage because this is a fully attended Olympics. 
Carly's next stop will be on balance beam and then floor exercise with the rest of the lead group. Elfie, how do you think this lineup of apparatus works for her? Well, I think her two toughest events are out of the way. They were good, but the next two, balance beam floor exercise, they can be great for Carly. This can be a long process, this prepping of the uneven bars. Every athlete likes it a little bit different. Some like the bars very dry with a lot of chalk on them. Some take it all off. Just depends on what you're accustomed to. And now Carly can remove the hand guards and get set for her balance beam. Zhang Nan was the bronze medalist at the World Championships that we've talked about so much. That was the last major competition featuring this group of gymnasts. And that was actually the best placement ever for a female Chinese athlete in gymnastics at a World Championships. But of course, we remember four years ago in Sydney, Lu Xuan of China won the bronze medal in the all-around. That actually happened when Andrea Radikan was stripped of her all-around gold medal. Lu Xuan ended up moving up. Lu Xuan also here in Athens doing broadcasting for Chinese television. Excellent leg extension. Once again, beautiful body line, open shoulders. Just the dismount, a, a, a little bit weak, Al. When we first came to Athens and saw her doing it, it was, we were like, that can't be your dismount. It's, uh, it's a double pike. <laughs> well, her teammate, Wang Tian Tian, fell off out of the competition from the beam, and that'll be the next stop, as we said. You know, she was just yawning a little while ago before she got up on uneven bars to do her routine, but, you know, the routine was spectacular. Really nice lines, great form. But just the dismount, that step, that can be costly. Shang Nan gets a 9-4-6-2, those steps. Oh, those steps, we said it so many times, but we've seen things decided by thousands, and they're a tenth, so it's easy to figure how important they are. Carly Patterson has gone and solidly put up a 9-5-7-5. We'll re-enter the one-of-a-kind world of Svetlana Horkina to see if she can keep up with Carly next. Okay. Around final continues in the second rotation, and our cameras continue to watch Svetlana Horkina's every move, and that's the way she likes it. The Russian diva wants to win an Olympic gold medal in the worst way. Now, I could overstate her desire, but then I'd still be understating it. За всеми деньгами не угонишься. Будем говорить кризис, но Русскому человеку, очень ко всему, да, к любому. Я, рож... я родилась в России, я останусь россиянкой, я буду жить в России. Svetlana Horkina walks with a swagger that's not just for show, even though it is. It comes from knowing that in gymnastics, she's the center of attention. Я совершенно спокойно чувствую, я знаю, что их присутствие. Мне нравится, когда вот когда меня называют дива. Дива это, я так понимаю, это вот какое-то такое волшебное существо. Это в моем понятии. There's been nothing magical about the last two Olympics for Sveta. Tears of team disappointment in Atlanta. Tears of team and personal disappointment in Sydney. Now at the age of 25, the diva is back for a third dance. A last chance at the all-around gold she covets. Так же сильно, как и матерью своих детей. Я не хочу быть сильной, в кавычках. 
конечно, говорю, что это последний бал. Это последние мои олимпийские игры. Я только поеду и заберу свое. I want to win the gold medal as much as I want to mother a child. That is Svetlana Horkina. And she never, ever ceases to surprise you with what she says, what she does, how she acts. She loves the attention. We're going to miss her, and she's going to miss this. She's next up on the uneven bars, along with Carly Patterson and Courtney Kupetz. Carly has gone and put up a very solid score that will get her back from eighth place near the top, depending on what happens after this. You know, four years ago after the Sydney Olympics, she said she really started to feel her age. But I'll tell you what, after winning world championships last year, she really became rejuvenated. And she said there weren't any shining stars out there that could really challenge her. That was Leonette Arkayev, the 64-year-old longtime coach and architect of Russian success. Svetlana's had a difficult year. She broke a bone in her foot was in a cast for a while, but has never given up on her dream. Watch this release. Very nice work. Wow, that was an amazing save right there. Not a big deduction at all, but... What did she save? Well, she was very crooked in the handstand, and a lot of gymnasts would have crashed down on the bar, or, or at least had a form deduction, but not Horkina. So she fights through it. You know, in the qualification to get to this all-around final, she scored 9.75. It was a huge score. This definitely wasn't the same type of exercise. Oh, does that reaction say it all? He knows something went wrong. And she looks like she does, too. Well, she really hasn't been landing dismounts that well. This is a game of tenths and even hundreds or thousands of a point. She tries to disguise this a little bit, turns quickly to face the judges, but it wasn't a stick. Well, if she was trying to hide something, she did. Nine, seven, two, yeah. five. No, I don't agree with that at all. I know she has the reputation, but that that's not right. And the French women continue at the top of the standings. Emily Lepinay. The French were right there at the top at the end of the first rotation. First and third. Oops. A little bit of a balance check here. She's really going to have to be great on this event in order to stay up there in the standings, and that is really going to be a tall order. This exercise not having the great difficulty that we'll see from some of the top athletes. Two apparatus being competed on at the same time. That is a big mistake right there. She got such a great start on the on the uneven bars with a super difficult exercise, but she's had all kinds of little bobbles and not quite perfect gymnastics. That's why this all around is so hard. Oops. Oh. That is disastrous right there. Well, she won't stay with the leaders now. She's going to lose bonus points for the dismount. She's also going to incur a major deduction for putting her hands down. Done in combination, just no, nowhere near enough power on this to get it all the way around and put it to her feet. And that's a punch to the stomach. Eight, one, one, two. It all felt so good on the uneven bars, and now it feels so bad. So to summarize, 
Carly Patterson in her attempt to join Mary Lou Retton as the only other American to win the Olympic all-around championship. Started on fault, did okay, improved dramatically on uneven bars, still has beam and floor exercise to come. The wrap-up to the second rotation will come when Courtney Kupetz goes. There was a thought she might not even compete, but on a bad leg, she's gutting through this. She's next. Coca-Cola, proud World War. The games of the 28th Olympiad on NBC are brought to you by Hump. Final few routines in the second of four rotations for the women's all-around Olympic title. This is Courtney Kupetz from Gaithersburg, Maryland. Her family is here supporting her, and she just wishes that after coming back from tearing an Achilles tendon, she didn't have to worry about soreness in her right leg. But she's on the uneven bars now, and after a slow start on the vault, this is an apparatus where if she makes a big statement, she can at least get back in the mix and feel better about things. Absolutely. This is her strength. She was a 2002 world gold medalist on this event and, and she really can make a huge push here. A lot of difficult gymnastics at the Olympics, obviously, but one of the things that sets Courtney apart is how high she flies on her releases. Judges love that. Right there. One more, right? Wow. There. Great amplitude. On that step, you just don't know how much that leg factors in, but we know the step factors in. There's her coach, Kelly Hill, who, of course, coached two other Olympians, Dominique Dawes from 1996, the Magnificent Seven. She also competed in 2000 along with teammate Elise Ray. What does this do to her, Tim? Oh, this is going to help a lot. It's a beautiful exercise, and like I said, she really does fly. It's, it's just a shame she takes the big step on the landing. We'd have been 9-7 plus, I think, from looking at the score that Svetlana Horkina got a little bit ago. Just holds on to this tuck a little bit too long, and her hips are too far in back of her heels when they hit the mat. And you either take a quick step back, or you're gonna sit down. Courtney gets a good score. 9-6-2-5. That will move her up from 12. Now back to Alina Kozic on the bars. 9-5-1-2. Alina, the 2004 European champion, and she said that has given her such great motivation for this competition. This, of course, balance beam being a really great strength of the Ukrainian team. Beautiful, beautiful full turn. She holds that leg up high into this acrobatic combination. That was excellent. what this is a great exercise so far beautiful dance element she's got all the difficult tricks whoops and that was a very simple skill you know, the one thing you can never prepare for is whether it's going to be dead silent in the arena or you're going to be performing with some weird music blaring in the background oh this beam can be an absolute demon will that knock her out of it right i would say so that bunch of steps backwards sitting down and the wobble on the jump full turn i mean that was the easy part of the routine but this was fine too 
once again, though, holds on to her tuck way too long. Feet are too far underneath her, and there's no way you can recover from that. It doesn't seem right. You get through all the really tough stuff on the beam, and then the dismount does you in. 8 6 8 7. Can't absorb that. And threaten the medalists. And now from Australia, Alana Slater on the beam, a 9 2 1 2. We've talked about Peggy Lydic, the transplanted American coach of the Australians. And this is the one apparatus, if you want to call it that, floor exercise where Alana can really show her stuff. In my opinion, one of the best choreographed exercises in this competition. And you know, Alana just, she loves an audience. Well, you can watch a lot of floor exercise and be very impressed and then see something like that and get reminded as to how important choreography is to a routine. And then you take a gymnast who can sell it, Tim. Exactly. And you, you can see right off the bat that she feels it. She enjoys what she's doing out there. It definitely shows. Well, if you remember the piece on Svetlana Horkina and the vaulting debacle of the 2000 Sydney Olympic Games, it was actually Alana Slater who brought it to the judge's attention that the vaulting horse was too low. Speaking of too low, how about 935? LP, sometimes I'm confused. Mm -hmm. I see something, I like it, and then... Yeah, the Al, definitely. I think that's a little bit too harsh. I mean, she really went out there and sold that routine, and the tumbling was great. So, Svetlana Horkina, in her quest to win a gold medal that could complete her as a gymnast, has taken the lead. Carly Patterson has moved up to fourth, and Courtney Kupetz is right behind her. This league group will move to balance beam. And as we have seen already tonight, some dreams have certainly died there. Still to come, much more gymnastics. The Olympic Games is about as major as it gets for these gymnasts. Everybody holds their breath when the destination is the balance beam. That's where we're headed. Svetlana Horkina, the Russian diva dreaming of a first ever all-around gold, has the lead over Daniela Sofrani of Romania. Carly Patterson of the United States is fourth, 0.237 behind, and right there at 0.287 is Courtney Kupetz. Svetlana Horkina got a huge number on the uneven bars. I know you guys thought it was too high. Is she feeling like she got lucky, or is she feeling like she was justly rewarded? Well, I'm sure she never thinks that she's lucky. She th feels she earns everything. But, you know, Al, Carly Patterson coming into this, she can get a gigantic number nine seven plus and Horkina actually has struggled at the Olympic Games on balance beam first day scored just a little bit more than a nine one Carly like I said she could be nine seven plus watching from the stands national team coordinator Marta Caroli and she's giving her lungs a workout and if there is one voice that Carly can pick out of a crowd it's Marta's sometimes you can get an indication from the warm-ups, how Carly's feeling, and I'll tell you what, she was very calm and very steady. So this is the apparatus where you think Carly has to make her move on the scoreboard. Well, it's, it's her best event. There's no doubt about it. And she can bring in the biggest number on beam.
right off the top here, her first test. Oh, solid. Coming up right here, just her dismount by far. The most difficult in this competition. There it is. Can it be? Oh, it can be, can be it really be. big. It should be. She makes this look so easy. Tumbles the entire length of the beam, tumbling, twisting, turning, and a blind landing, and nails it cold. Awesome. You know these gymnasts and their coaches. Here's Evgeny Marchenko. They really go through the ups and downs of all the training and even loss. We remember back in February when his mother died and Carly Patterson waited for him to arrive in New York at the Garden and in her honor she won the Visa American Cup and there she gets a 9725 let's check it out on high speed super slow-mo so intricate and tricky what's so hard about it is she twists right off of the balance beam and then she does a double front somersault this is called an Arabian type element Super difficult, but to be able to open and put your feet down for a blind landing when everything, I mean everything this young lady has worked for is on the line, that was big time. Well, big, that, big time. That's the highest score, and everybody else is going to have to try and chase that. Now, Anna Pavlova had no idea what was going on on beam because while Carly was doing that, she was doing this on floor exercise. Sound when Carly hit her dismount. I think Anna Pavlova finally living up to the Russian coach's expectations. Great job. Third place after two rotations. Looking like she's going to stay near the top after three. Again, that's her mom. What a treat to be able to share an experience like that with your daughter. Maybe not all the time. <laughs> Nam. 9325, 9462. 
the bronze medalist from the world championships last year needs a big number here on beam and she can do that starts off with a very difficult mount not to mention extremely risky leap type elements watch this one right here a high and the extreme position Whoops. Pavlova's score on that floor exercise was 9612 so she's gonna pressure everybody else Very sure of herself, aggressive. So far, the Chinese, both men and women, have had very disappointing competitions at these Olympic Games. The men were favored to win the gold and performed very poorly. The judges can be harsh if they want to. They didn't get what they wanted in the team competition, trying to get something out of this all around. Nice double back somersault. Knees pasted together very well. And the score for Zhang Nan is a 9-6-6-2. That's the kind of number we were talking about. And she got set to go. Anna Pavlova's number I mentioned. She's happy about that. This is going to come down like you would dream it would dramatically to the fourth rotation. And if you can believe it, Carly Patterson will go last in the competition, just like it ended for Paul Hom last night. Now Svetlana Horkina on the balance beam. She needs to be better, Al. She has not been great at the Olympic Games on beam. Is there any better feeling than knowing your beam is over? Morkina needs a 9-4-8-8 to tie Carly, so obviously she wants to do better than that. She's got to be so close now to this gold medal, and she told you a little while ago how much she has to have it. Very difficult mount. Following the mount, this very risky acrobatic sequence right here. It wasn't the real big elements that Svetlana has struggled with. Some of the easier leaps, the judges felt she didn't show enough amplitude and too much of a pause in between them, like right oh. there. That is not the kind of mistake that you can make in the Olympic all-around finals. Not the kind you want, that's for sure. Tim talked about amplitude on a skill like that. Judges like to see the back leg kick up a little bit higher. How big a deduction is that wobble? Well, at least a tenth of a point, if not two. Well, then that's huge. These Olympic Games with a brand new dismount. Plus the hop. So if you're Svetlana Horkina, which is a dicey proposition, you've got to be thinking, all right, what are the judges going to do to me this time? It seems like every time she's gone, there's a phone call, a conference, a meeting, a deduction, something. 
Now, Leonid Arkayev has been up there shaking his head at times, showing his tough football coach demeanor. Well, there's no question that she's not very happy with this exercise, and it really shouldn't bring in a big score. Courtney Coupette's getting set to go on the balance beam. And Svetlana Horkina, who needed a 9-4-8-8 to get up to Carly Patterson, is waiting. As is Coupette's, and it seems as though one of the worst positions to be in with Horkina is after her. You always wind up waiting and waiting. Here it is. 9462. I, I think that's fair. That's actually a little bit high. So it's only going to be a matter of hundreds now between Horkina and Carly Patterson going into the last rotation. Shades of the World Championship. Kupetz was right behind Carly in the standings after the second rotation. But again, she's bothered by a sore right leg. And actually so bothered that in the team competition, they took her out and replaced her with Mohini Bardwaj. She felt that she just couldn't perform two days ago up to USA Gymnastics standards, but here she is now. So what do you look for in a balance beam from a gymnast whose leg is hurt? Well, I'll tell you what, just earlier in the warm-up, she was having some major problems. She actually looked a little bit nervous. The big challenge for her is landing on one leg, that right leg. Did she say that? Yeah, it looked, I, I don't know how. It looked like both of her feet were off of the beam. Do you think that gets rid of any hope of a medal? Well, it certainly got her heart beating, I know that. It's gonna be a, a couple of tenths at least now. That, You can't really call it catastrophic, but not good certainly describes it well. Coming up right here, she has a really difficult dismount planned. Goes the entire length of the beam, tumbles right off into a double back. tell you what you have to admire an athlete when they play through any type of pain you can never really put yourself in their body and feel what it feels like but I want to know something with a bad leg how does she not fall off the bar that, it was it was amazing uh, she kind of lands a little bit locked leg on this leap here and it's her foot just slides wow. and that's a save she did not fall off, amazingly. Courtney Kupetz, 8.95, 9.75. So that is going to end any hope. But there is plenty of reason to believe for Daniela Solfroni. Guys, I had a chance to watch her the other day lining up right with the beam. And I'll tell you what, I don't know if I've ever seen a performance where she and the beam looked like one. Well, especially on this man, Mount L, she has to line herself up perfectly. A little bit of a dip there. That routine I was talking about did not have one of those in it. Coach Octavian Bellu says that what he's been trying to teach her this year is how to win. He says she's figured out how to work hard. She's figured out how to compete. Well, they won the gold medal. And they did it in remarkable fashion. Thing that was so impressive about their win 
wasn't not necessarily how great they are at gymnastics. It's how consistent and, and the, the lack of errors. I mean, the, the level of gymnastics is so high None. That, that all of the teams are faltering a little bit, not the Romanians. Big dismount here. Triple fall. Now that didn't seem like a big time routine. Well, there were a number of places that were a little bit awkward looking and actually on the dismount, she takes the slide to the side. But beyond that, if the judges are looking to be a little bit critical, she doesn't totally complete the triple full, which is a deduction on top of that. Lana Horkina packing her bags for the final showdown on floor exercise. Sophronia 9, 3, 6, 2. That hurts a lot. Carly Patterson knows she is going to go last. Just like Paul Hom did. It's unbelievable that an American will go last knowing exactly what in this case she has to do to clinch this. After three rotations to become only the second women to win the Olympic all around. Carly Patterson has the lead. The passion is building. It's going to come down to can she be as great as she has shown that she can be. Okay, the fourth and final rotation coming up soon, but we'll shift over to swimming for just a moment here. Headed toward another finish with Carly Patterson going last with the lead and Svetlana Horkina 26 thousandths of a point behind her. That after Paul Hom's gold medal finish that was the closest finish ever in gymnastics. Carly will go last, and, and that sounds great because you can compare everything, but boy, the weight can just go on and on and on. Now, Zhang Nan from China, the bronze medalist, right behind Carly Patterson at last year's Worlds on floor exercise. And I like her chances. She's presently in fourth, but she's good on floor. And Pavlova, actually, who is in third, presently on the lowest scoring event vault. I think it was a great exercise. She had one small error where she maybe didn't complete the triple fall, but she put it out there. This is this is going to be good for China, I think. You know, she had strong tumbling. I thought the music selection was great. And I'll tell you what, choreography has really been at its best here at these Olympic Games. Here's a look at the triple twist. A little bit of a bounce out of it. Yang Nan a 9-6. That's put her in the medal picture. Now Svetlana Horkina on floor exercise. These are like performances. It's almost not like gymnastics. She takes it to a different level. Leonette Arkayev knows what's on the line here. This is her last Olympic performance. That's what she says. She was scored well on bars. 9-7-2-5. Got a 9-4-6-2 on beam. She trails Carly Patterson coming into this by just thousands of a point. Al, she needs to be great here because Carly can bring in a big number here. And being just a little bit behind, she's got to be nearly flawless.
part always draws the crowd in. Floor exercise has always truly been her stage. I don't know about you guys, but she, she makes me smile. Well, she did all she could do on that. It's passion. She's going to walk right past Carly Patterson, who's doing everything in the book to stay loose and stay ready. Like she should walk right over to a lit mirror and <laughs> well, start taking a, the makeup off. She's an actress as well. And she knew this was going to be her last performance. Lots of smiles. That's what I enjoyed. Let's look and see if it goes. I see white, so she is in. The line is in. And this is what the fans never get. Nine, five, six, two. Well, you know, the tumbling isn't the hardest that's being done in the competition. I think it's a fair score. I really do. And for the last time, Svetlana Horkina will take her Olympic starting number off. Carly Patterson and Evgeny Marchenko hanging on. She will go last for gold. Moving to L.A. means adjustment. The long wait for Carly Patterson is going to go on a little bit longer. She is in the position of drama, last in floor exercise. With the lead coming into this final rotation, you know she'll get a little distraction here pulling for her teammate, Courtney Kupetz. And Courtney at this point, after an 8 9 7 5 on beam, should just be out there enjoying this. I think she just said, I'm glad I did it. Yes. Well, she had been contemplating not competing in the all around with that leg injury, but. She has a lot to be proud of, I'll tell you. She's not going to get a medal in the all-around, but she helped the USA earn a silver medal in the team. After coming back so far, stepping out of bounds there, but just a year ago, tearing her Achilles tendon at the World Championships. Most athletes, their career would be over. All that training and all those meets all over the place to 
miss out on a chance to compete in the all-around at the Olympics would have been a shame, but she's gotten that experience. Now, Daniela Solfroni trailed Carly Patterson by 26 hundredths of a point after the third rotation. So she's still thinking metal. out of that triple turn as well. A lot of problems in this competition with some of those simpler dance elements. meaning the tumbling, but a silly, silly mistake in that dance. Well, you know, the Romanians, they came here, obviously, to win as many medals as they could, but it is all about team for that Romanian squad. Octavian Balou said he doesn't have a leader on his squad. 9-5-3-7 for Daniela Solfroni. She will not pass Zhang Nan. She will not pass Svetlana Horkina. Here's Anna Pavlova, who was third after the third rotation. Now, the top three spots after the third rotation, less than a tenth. That's one of those steps. Like that one. Right there. It was a very nice ball from Anna. But this is the Olympic all-around finals. A lot of Russian fans here at the indoor hall. We haven't seen too many of these vaults where the women have actually had perfect landings. Very difficult to do. Pavlova's score, 9-4-2-5. She is now in third position with one gymnast to go. And that is Carly Patterson. In place to join one of the most elite lists in Olympic gymnastic history. Her floor exercise for gold, next. We've come to the moment of truth in the women's all around. A major fork in the road for two women. Separated by half an earth. Put in this building for a love of gymnastics. For Russian Svetlana Horkina. A gold medal that could define the rest of her life. For Carly Patterson, a 90-second performance that, if she delivers, will change the rest of her life. She needs to score a 9-5-3-6 on this floor exercise to win the gold medal and become only the second American woman to stand alone in this sport. Now on floor exercise the USA, Carly Patterson. She's just four tumbling passes away from possible gold.
trade for. Move over, Mary Lou! Oh, my God. I'm gonna get away. Now we know that she knows this is not just another meet. Carly Patterson has won the gold medal and now Again, readjusting her dreams. It looks as though Svetlana Horkina will embrace this silver, just as she embraced the bronze in the team funnel. And Anna Pavlova will just miss. She has been knocked out of the medals to dreaded fourth place. Zhang Nan will win the bronze. And with the silver medal, the diva says goodbye. And Carly Patterson says hello to an entirely changed life. That's the photo you'll see on the front page tomorrow. And now we know this was Carly Patterson's destiny after all. All right, Al Patterson was eighth after one rotation, the vault for her, fourth after the uneven bars, first after beam, and then she nailed her floor routine. A 9.537 would have been good enough. She posted a 9.712, and that got her the gold. And when we come back, we'll have the medal ceremony out at gymnastics for the women's all-around final. Hey, what's the problem? I don't know. It just died on me. Carly Patterson stands on the gold medal podium, one of the most exclusive places in all of sport. Tim, as someone who has heard the national anthem wearing a gold medal like that in 1984, what happens now? Well, for Carly, the national anthem will never sound the same again. Ever. Ladies and gentlemen, the national anthem of the United States of America. Not Honda, not Toyota, not Nissan, BMW, not even Lexus. Well, it all started at a cousin's birthday party about 10 years ago. Carly, can you put into words, we see the smile, put into words your emotions being the all-around champion at the Olympics. Gosh, I don't, I don't even know what to say or think. I mean, it 
No, I didn't, didn't even seem real, you know? I mean, you dream about it all your life and all your career, and it's like you never know if it's going to happen, and it's like, oh, God, I'm going to have to, like, wake up or something. <laughs> you have said that you were not intimidated by Corkina. We saw you smiling during her, during her floor routine. What were you thinking? During hers? Yeah. Um, <laughs> you probably don't remember what you were thinking. Oh, well, I was just... I don't know. I mean, I was happy that I have one event left, so I just... And when you finished your floor, did you know that you had done enough? Yeah, pretty much because my coach just said I needed to just do a good floor team like I always do and just, you know, try and stick all my passes and stay in bounds, and I did that, and so I, I was like, I mean, I guess so. <laughs> and after the team silver and there are a lot of expectations, what was this like? Did you feel like the weight was lifted off of you? Definitely, I feel so good right now. I, I can't even describe it. I mean, glad to be Olympic champion. I don't know what to say. You came back from eighth. You were in eighth place after the first rotation. You knew what Paul Hom had done last night. Did you get any inspiration from him? Yeah, a little. I mean, vault was my first event, and I mean, it's not like my best event, and I did not do the greatest vault. I mean, I landed out of bounds, and I was like, gosh, I, I needed that, you know, extra points, you know, for the rest of the meet, but... God, I mean, yeah, Paul Ham's story just shows that it's not over till it's over, you know. So. Well, you both proved that. Congratulations. Thank you so much. <laughs>